kind of cage you must build to hold a god. A god who is destroying crops and killing people. Dozens of cages like this are being built across southern India. Many already hold the living embodiment of Ganesh. Not because he is evil, but because something deadly happens when this god is mixed with coffee. There's a coffee estate in which the elephants are existing. There's a direct conflict for survival. You blindly go to a Starbucks, you will, you will larger a tall coffee or a large coffee or medium coffee. But you have no idea the elephants are one of the inhabitants of the coffee estates. Tom Grant, a professor at Abraham Baldwin Agricultural College. I lead students from here to southern India, a place where farmers risk their lives and elephants lose their freedom to bring you a cup of coffee. The first time we ran into elephants was quite literal. <laughs> They almost ran into us. I forgot to call you because there's some elephant problem in there. We met this man who owned several coffee plantations that were close to his house. And you know, he said that there were several wild elephants that were located in the vicinity. So um, he offered to let us hop in his Jeep and just go into the middle of them and look for them. So immediately we all dropped into the Jeeps and went out to get as close as we could to them. Naveen led them into a landscape they had never seen before. Umbrella-like coffee trees multi-cropped with pepper vine, jackfruit, cardamom, and betel nut, all in the shade of much taller trees. It was green and beautiful. It was like something you see in like a travel brochure. It's so when they cross the fence, the damage, the fence is damaged. No, no, 1990 there were no incidents of uh, uh, elephants intruding into the private lands and destroying crops. And those days there was not much, uh, I would say, uh, people uh, cultivating a lot of land, so there was less of cultivation. Now there is no uncultivated land. Entire when you exit from the forest, every inch of land is cultivated, either by ginger, coffee, paddy, cardamom. Formerly there was no elephants. Of recent, we have the problem of the elephants coming over and destroying our entire crops. They come over from Nagarhole National Park, a forest preserve that's home to perhaps a hundred tigers and about a thousand endangered elephants. This man who is walking in front has seen the elephant pass through here 30 minutes ago. <laughs> Uh, what's he saying? He said yesterday he came for firewood. Mm -hmm. When he came for the firewood, he heard one sound. Then somebody else started shouting from there. Entire five, six of them ran. Workers ran because coffee plantations are now one of India's major conflict points between humans and elephants. It is very bad because uh, every six, not six months, three months, we hear about a death by the elephant. So the people are really upset about the Elephant menace. Every area in Kurga has got the problem. A neighboring farmer came with his gun. Uh, there's nothing to eat in the forest, and the forest has been depleted of its natural resources for the animals. So they're crossing out of the boundary to our estates. Hence, this human animal conflict has become more. This part of Kurg is covered in forest, large government parks, small and scattered sacred forests, and hundreds of private coffee plantations. Elephants browse in all of them. Sometimes they kill people. It's happened a lot of times in Kug. This is one of the footprints of the elephant. So it's come here, can you can even see the toenails. So it's put as one leg, one foot here. Then it's come and put another foot here. You see, this is all the toenails of the elephant, this is the footprint. It's come here, it's lift here, and it's gone. 
It isn't clear how many elephants there are or where because the coffee plantation is so dense. Dense and there are coffee bushes, so they are inside. So you have to be very observant, very quiet. Then only you can find out if there are elephants there. So the only hope that you have is either get down low and look under the leaves and then you might be able to see the feet in the distance or get somewhere high like climb up a tree and see if you can see them from there. So you really don't know they're there until they're up on you. This is as bad as it's ever been? Yes, uh, from past three years it's becoming worse. The uh, elephant menace every monsoon, before the monsoon, when this jackfruit season starts, the elephants are there. So what we could hear was their big gigantic legs crushing the trees and vaguely, like very quietly you could hear their ears flapping. The reason is there are not many people working in this estate now. So it's absolutely quiet. So they could come and stay here. Nobody will be there to chase them away. So when it immediately goes to the neighboring estate, which is smaller areas, there are people working. And so they burst crackers, shout and chase them off again to this estate. The neighbor runs their elephants off with firecrackers and they come storming through the plantations, running over trees, people, whatever's in their way. And that's what makes the elephants so dangerous is that they, you know, they don't know that these people are, you know, just doing their jobs or just trying to grow the plantations. All they're seeing is people running at them, shooting firecrackers off. Naveen gave advice on elephant safety. To duck behind a tree if you heard them. And, <laughs> and if they sounded like they were coming close and to go back to the jeeps. We got the guy, we have a protector guy who's carrying this shotgun to scare away the elephants. Supposedly they shoot in like the air and it scares the elephants away. Well, um, from my experience, he was the first one to run away. So he didn't really do us much good. While we're in the mix of it, uh, several elephants snuck up on us, which I know sounds crazy that elephants can sneak up on someone, but they're really quiet, especially for an animal their size. Yes, uh, well, they were slowly moving, the branches were breaking, that's how we, made, we came to know that they were inside. And uh, unfortunately, the neighboring uh, uh, estate people started screaming and bursting crackers. That's the time they started running, and we also had to run. But some people do not run away. And so uh, before I knew it, the elephants were running past us and we were kind of following after them. How dangerous are elephants? This is video of a captive elephant going after people at a festival. This is an elephant hitting full attack mode chasing a man across a river and catching him even as others try to drag him away. This is an elephant chasing a boy down a street. Elephants kill up to 300 people a year in India. For most of his life, PC Bopana could walk his estate any time of the day or night without fear. Safe, no problem of the, the lion or tiger or elephant, no wild animals at all. But now, every painful step he takes reminds him of the day he quietly stood in his coffee estate talking with his surveyor. Of course, our attention was in one direction talking like this. Then I just turned, you see, this is my area. There is a fence, you can see. So this is my, there is elephant. When I turned, there is elephant staring at us, standing, single. 
about to about to start about to move both uh, ears were widely stretched without any movements i i could see one is two ears so big about to, i thought it will definitely it will now attack us it came running when we started running it also ran towards us so it caught me it it hit you trust no trunk sorry trunk hit my leg i fell down fortunately that elephant went away Bopana's leg was broken so badly that a year later he was still in treatment and still limping. Yet it could have been worse. Bopana's wife was at first told he had been killed. First he uh, heard the bad voice, you know, all the bad news. He's dead. When she heard my voice, you know, she became so happy. Oh. No, 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 God is there. God was less watchful in this village on the edge of the national park. Is this in the national park where we are right now? So this is Titimati. Titimati town, just around, just in the boundary of national park. That makes these streets a natural corridor for elephants going in and out of the park. Netravathi and Tulasi were 14 and 15. Mm -hmm. But he says uh, December 29th, it was a normal day, it was a Monday. And they got up, they got ready, went to the school. And around 10.30 uh, or 10.45, they don't exactly remember the time. They got an information to the school that something has happened and they have to come back quickly here. And by then they had already brought the dead body here. Their mother, Lakshmi, had been outside getting water. Just a few yards from their front door, when an elephant attacked and killed her. She says she was a little afraid to see the body because it was damaged beyond recognition. So she says the body was uh, beaten up by the elephant. So that's their mother, yeah, that's their mother. So she says uh, her mother was appreciated by uh, the entire community. Everybody liked her in the surrounding area. And uh, for her, for them, they like dosa she made. She used to make dosas and uh, they both like the dosas she made. They want to chase the elephant away to a long distance, never to see it. And she says she gets angry sometimes seeing an elephant. They don't have any soft feeling for elephants. Austin vanished. <laughs> Austin thought it'd be an excellent idea to go off with Snake Satish and try and track down these elephants that we were so near to, and he did. <laughs> so me and Snake Satish decide we're gonna run after the elephants, which is probably not the best idea. To the sound of distant cracker blasts and shouts, they moved deep into the coffee estate. So we, he's a master tracker. He's tracked animals for many, many years. Satish pointed out signs. So I'm following behind him with the camera, you know, making sure I get good shots of him walking through the plantation. Down low, beneath the trees, are feet. And he's steadily making me feel like we're in a war zone, you know, he's telling me, get down, get down. So I'm hiding, looking around, trying to figure out what he sees. And before I know it, we hear the gunshots. We steer, the gunshots begin and uh, we don't see the guy, but we just hear him in the opposite direction of us. So we get down and before we know it, we have several elephants tearing through coffee trees and uh, the plants right in front of us and uh, it came probably within 15, 20 yards of us. And we, we noticed then that there was a lot more than we had anticipated. Uh, when we went today to the plantation, we expected one or two elephants, but to our surprise there were 13 elephants and uh, though we had uh, somebody with a gun, it was uh, a frightening thing where we had to run for our lives. I end up having to uh, climb up a tree, the nearby tree, to try to see where they're at so that we didn't walk up on them. And then I ended up being surrounded pretty much by them. Um, and I had to wait for them to go on by before I climbed back down. So they waited up a tree, watching the ears of elephants flapping below them. 
finally, the elephants moved on. He came back covered in dirt and like, <laughs> he just, I don't know where he had been. He looked like he'd been on another planet. And he comes back with this, just bewildered and excited. And so I wanted to hear what he had to say and what he saw. The Swami Vishnu Mayananda says that at one time, the elephant was welcomed by farmers. Long ago, when he came here in 85-86, the innocent farmers, they always used to believe if elephant come and eat away their crop, they say it is the part of God Ganesha. The final harvest will be much more than what they will expect. They will always used to think that this is an offering to the god Ganesha, the form of elephant. That was a faith they had. Many temples honor the elephant god, and no celebration proceeds without him. Actually, Hindus, they worship elephant as a god, Ganapati or Ganesha. Before any rituals or any family function, they used to worship Ganesha. Ganesha is nothing but elephant god. So elephants, it's uh, actually in Hinduism, it's a holy animal for Hindus because in our Hindu, it's very popular, God is a Ganesh. Ganesh face is elephant head, elephant face. The birth of Ganesh can be read as a metaphor for the Hindu ideal that all humans and all animals have souls. God is Parvati, wife of Shiva, was lonely because her husband was often away, so she used her powers to create a son. Then while she bathed, she sent her son to guard the gate. Shiva unexpectedly returned and enraged that a strange boy refused to let him in, cut off the boy's head. <laughs> Parvati was crushed and threatened to destroy creation unless Shiva brought her son back. So Shiva placed the head of an elephant on the boy's shoulders, breathed new life into it, and pronounced the child his own son, Ganesh. Foremost among the gods, the remover of obstacles. But today the elephant has a new name, Menace. Well, we have time and again reported on wild elephants of Hassan, which have proven to be a menace for the residents. The growth of elephant conflicts has come along with the growth in coffee production. The prime elephant range in southern India, home to half the elephants in the country, is also the nation's prime coffee growing region. And the question on the ground is often reduced to whose life is more important, the life of a human or the life of an elephant? Villagers or the local people's issue is, if somebody is dead, nobody comes immediately by a forest department. But if an animal is dead, like an elephant, or immediately within uh, one hour, uh, the police department have landed and the forest department and landed, everything is cordoned off. And uh, there is a lot of uh, media. But the life of human being is not taken so seriously as the life of the animals from the forest. See, that is the local uh, people's uh, anger. If it continues over a period of time, the tolerance will go down. And now, after a while, it becomes a menace. When it becomes a menace, your approach to the same animal will change. It, it's exactly like a rabbit coming to your back, backyard and chewing away all your flower parts and other things. You will only call it as a menace. One person who has always defended the elephant is K.M. Chinapa, who came to Nagarhole National Park 50 years ago as a game warden. See, when I came there, it was a horrible thing because of poaching. I used to guard the elephant, not the poachers. Now he tours the park by bus with the tourists, though he remains a hero to many for putting the protection of the ecosystem above everything else. But uh, after 72, the ivory trade started and uh, poaching has been started. Then I thought uh, we have to give a fitting uh, reply. Did you and your people work with shoot poachers? Uh, at that time, there is no immunity. Immunity means uh, if you shoot, uh, you may be a murderer and they can uh, uh, prosecute me 
or I, I will land in jail and all. But uh, I took my own these things because uh, I used to make a big story. Poachers, both the poachers, they shot themselves like that. Uh, of course, I did like that only. So you did go after the poachers? Yeah. And they stopped? Yes, yeah, stopped, in some extent. The crisis came when one of Chinapa's junior foresters saw someone poach a deer. Immediately, forester shoot that poacher, that chippa. But Chinapa took that response to himself only. He told police people, I only killed that fellow. So uh, police arrested him, put him behind the bar for more than six months. Then afterwards, he took voluntary retirement. <laughs> In later years, Chinapa has worked with Snake Satish to educate people about the importance of wildlife. No, once I came to Kur for work, I met Mr. K. M. Chinapa. He's the total instrumental for me. He's my guru. Satish and Chinapa see the elephant as dangerous only when cornered but it has been cornered by agricultural development. See, elephant menace started after this importing water from the Kabini. Till up to that, uh, no elephant, uh, these things. After uh, importing water, they released 40,000 acres of elephant area to the farmers. That's how, till up to that, uh, no elephant menace. Forest researchers and officials agree, at least in a general sense. Earlier they used to travel on a, a specific a corridor to a nearby forest from a bigger patch of forest. Now it's all been blocked. Fragmentation of habitat which is causing a lot of trouble to these elephants now. While farmers want elephants confined to national parks and public lands, Chinapa advocates giving the coffee forest back to the elephants. If the central government has to take that area and uh, all the people should be removed from that and only you have to give protection for only exclusively for elephant, then there is a chance. Otherwise, it's very bleak, I will tell you. Bleak would be an apt description of the precipitous population decline of India's elephants over the past century. Numbers fell from 200,000 to fewer than 30,000. Modern law forbids killing and severely restricts capture, sale, and use of elephants. An elephant can only be captured if it threatens the lives of people, not for merely destroying crops or land. But they are hard to stop with non-lethal measures, such as the solar electric fences now found around many coffee estates. Electric fences worked in the early stage. Now, so everywhere elephant fences are started, then elephants also started learning how to cross the fence, even you don't believe. So they're throwing elephants, throwing stones on the fence to break the fence. Stopping elephants with trenches is also an unreliable solution. If you trench it for 20 kilometers, elephant will walk the 21st kilometer to cross over. Relocating troublesome elephants doesn't work. In 2011 and 12, we had an experiment of catching two elephants, two big tuskers from the same area we captured this time, and they were radio collared to track them how they behave. And within about two, two and a half months, they got back to the original position. Now, some people are quietly protecting themselves and their property by killing elephants. In Kuru district alone, they killed more than 12 elephants by shooting, by electrification. We have the records. This elephant was found shot and later died. Observers say it was probably fatally wounded and angry before it killed these two people in a coffee plantation. <laughs> Yet Chinapa feels that what the forest department does to troublesome elephants is even worse. It's a horrible thing. I will never go there. Uh, sometimes I think it's better to shoot every animal. Then instead of killing slowly, it's better you shoot them. 
let them die. Vinod is one of India's 21st century solutions to killer elephants, a tribal mahout. This is his elephant, Nanjunda. It's still not accepted totally. He still has to give more training. Only last year, Nanjunda was wild, part of a small herd in Hassan that had killed at least eight people. We did have a lot of uh, casualties last year. So finally, the government and the court decided to capture these 25 elephants. Elephant is a heritage animal. By the very books of the law, you cannot kill it. Ravendra Kumar, assistant conservator of forests, says gaining permission to capture elephants is a long and now a revolving process. This 25 elephants were actually recorded and numbered and sent request, uh, request uh, to the government about three years back, three, four years back. By then we have another additions of another probably about 25 elephants. This is the forest department capturing a wild elephant. Three to four teams of three, uh, three members each and they would go in search of these elephants early in the morning of wherever we have heard about these elephants are roaming in the forest or even in the estates, coffee estates for that matter. So these people go on foot tracking these elephants. Then we send the team of uh, doctors with tranquilizer guns and also short guns on an elephant pack. Until the time you see, until the time we saw ourselves how, to, how they are captured, we wouldn't believe it. But to deal with an elephant, you need another elephant to go with. You go on an elephant back to deal with another elephant. A team of 30, mostly Mahouts and others from the Jenikaruba tribe, assists with the capture. The Jenikaruba are said to have almost mystical qualities when it comes to elephants. Only they can communicate with the elephants. I don't know what language. They are very close to elephants. Whatever command they'll give, elephants are ready to listen. Even taming also. Within two, three months, wild elephants will be tamed. The node went to the Hassan capture. And he goes in the wild to catch elephants. 30 members team go to catch elephants. He has caught so many elephants here. He has, uh, he has caught all the four elephants. He had been there to catch all these elephants. And he's not scared. The Santh went with his elephant, Abhimanyu. And they take photographs and only after it, there is a confirmation that this elephant has killed people, only then they're going to capture it. Veterinarian Vinay Shivamurthy is one of the doctors called to assist. Minimum three doctors is needed. I mean, we need to tranquilize that. The exact place at the thigh region or at the shoulder region. Dotting the any animal is very easy, but post uh, dotting is uh, very complicated. You know, like the way we heard the story that one of the veterinarian went to dart an animal and he missed the dart and then the elephant came at him and he was no longer alive. There are some symptoms which we can notice that it is completely induced. This is a trunk, no? Trunk totally it will rest on the earth where there will be no movement of trunk at all. And the flapping of ears, that will gradually it will stop. It will stop and it will stand where it is. No movement at all. Yeah, this very risky is there because we will not be knowing. Suppose if it is any liver damage, if it is suffering from liver damage, okay, then uh, our dosage what we dot, immediately there may be chances of uh, collapse. Even sitting down could kill the elephant, preventing the lungs from expanding to get air. So we make the elephant to lie down. Suppose when you tranquilize the elephant if it sits, Immediately, we will take the help of two, three, two to three elephants and make the make the tranquilized elephants to lie on the ground. Once the elephant is completely sedated, the mahouts will move in with huge ropes to tie it around its neck and its legs. The doctors will maintain a careful level of sedation. They want it to be alert enough to stand and walk on its own, but they want to minimize its resistance. There are elephants tied to the front and to the side, so that it, this elephant doesn't run away anywhere, and one elephant in the front is pulling this. Even drugged, a captive elephant will fight back. 
That's why it takes at least three trained elephants to force a captive onto a truck. At every stage, it remains dangerous for the elephant, too. This elephant, Maharaj, was darted in the truck to keep it calm during transport. But three days later, it died after breaking its skull trying to escape the cage where it was held. This is the kind of cage where Maharaj and Nanjunda met their fates. The cages are 20 feet tall. The bars are logs, each a foot in diameter. They are too big to be handled by men alone. We watched as probably 10, 15 men are doing everything they can to lift these logs into place on the cages. And then they bring these elephants in and one elephant, like as nothing, picks the whole thing up and puts it in place. Lysanth and his elephant work as one. Like many Mahouts, he has the athleticism of a gymnast, the communication skills of a horse whisperer, and total respect from his mount. He says his elephant, Abhimanyu, he's trained it in such a way that he gives signals only through his legs. If he wants the elephant to attack, he, he, gives his, he gives the signal from the leg. If he wants it to calm down, gives the signal from the leg. So it's only leg. He doesn't speak out anything. These logs that these elephants are picking up with their trunks are, I mean, they're huge, and they're just putting them in and building it like log cabin blocks. The Indians call these crowls. Similar crowds have been put up all around southern India. Yeah, all over the place. See, already you have seen Anachaukur, there are four cages. Again, Dubare, four cages. Here, again, four. Already 12 cages are up. In this recent operation, we have been looking for only the tuskers because we wanted to remove the tuskers earlier. Males are more dangerous, especially when hormones are driving them to mate. However, capture operations sometimes sweep up whole herds. When the trucks brought in the most recent captives, tightly chained in the back, they were small and immature and clearly unhappy. Even as young as a baby, they don't want to be in captivity. They're fighting, they're struggling to get away from these elephants. While one elephant holds the captive in the truck, Mahouts bind it with rope. I've always thought when you're going to carry an elephant somewhere, you're going to trank it, knock it out, and drag it. But they use other elephants to literally drag the elephant out the truck and force it into the cage with these huge ropes. And they they're not gentle. They make the elephant do what they want, and they use the big tusks just to nail the back end of the elephant towards the way they want it to. The wild elephant is let out of the truck only when it is held securely by the giant tuskers. Yet the shouts, the crowd, the dust make it feel chaotic. D.K. Bosker photographed the scene. I had never imagined that I would stand in front of a wild elephant in such a close fashion. And these two massive elephants, literally it was looking at me and I was going backwards and backwards. Like a larger elephant would lead out the other elephant and he would actually get in the cage with the elephant, the younger elephant that was being captured and he would stay in there with them until they had built up the cage a little bit and then he would crawl out. I was so afraid that it was gonna be like horrible and I wouldn't want to see it, but it wasn't really like that at all. It was amazing to see the work of what the elephant could do and the trainer wasn't even really making any noises out loud. I mean, he was in the elephant's ear, you know, guiding him, but it was almost like the elephant knew what to do. The, the elephant actually understands what they're saying. If he tells them to put it down, the elephant puts it down. If he tells them to pick it up, the elephant picks it up. And they are even coordinated enough to slide the, the logs into place which is pretty amazing. It was sad also, um, but at the same time I understood that they, they, had to, they had to do this. Just taking the elephant from its natural habitat and putting it into a cage, a tiny cage at that, for an elephant it was tiny. That was hard, yeah. It was hard, but at the same time I understood. I understood that it's what they thought was the right thing for the elephant. Not necessarily the right thing for the elephant, the right thing for the people. 
For the next three months, the elephants remained caged, each tended to by a mahout and his family, living in a tent right next to the animal. It says it needs food. It loves jaggery a lot. Jaggery is sugar. See, now it's shouting because it's getting the smell of jaggery in his hands. That's why it's shouting, give me some jaggery. This is the kraal where Vinod and Nanjunda bonded. They say elephants is as their child. They, want, uh, they are ready to give their lives for elephants. The kraals are just big enough for an elephant to turn around. It was very violent in the wild, but now it's almost rain now. It was very wild. It has killed three humans in the wild. So wild that, like Maharaj, it attacked the wooden bars. Okay, I think so. Okay, I think that means get back. It has broke so many trees because it used to get angry. While the visitors come and stand here, it was it was angry, it was enraged. But in the kraals, Nanjunda was taught that its life now depended upon a human. First, they'll make wild elephants to starve. Three, four days they'll starve. They'll, they'll not give any food or fodder for them, even water also. And after one week, they'll start giving little food and giving commands. So any animals, when it's starving, it will ready to listen any command. To immobilize the elephant, logs are inserted, confining the animal to a narrow third of the kraal. That allows for close contact or treatment of wounds. Elephants are often wounded during capture. And even the elephants, uh, you may be knowing that even if in by small wound, by with a small wound, the elephant will die because of uh, the maggots, the worms. Treatment of elephants in the kraals is supervised by veterinarians. The treatment will be very perfect for the animals which are suffering with any ailments. The Jenikaruba apply ancient medicines too. So this is the bark of a, a tree called Pulimavu tree. And uh, this is a, a medicine, they say it has a medicinal property for the elephant. And uh, since there is an elephant that is injured, which, has, which is swollen, so they say that the swelling will come down by applying this tree in, this, in the form of a paste. But they also bring the stick, the ankus, the bull hook. Basically, they use it to control the elephant. The, he says, generally, if the, the elephant goes berserk, they will hit it from the back on top of it so that it listens to them. In adverse conditions when it's really difficult for them, so they will hold it with this. So it controls the elephant. Control is sometimes asserted painfully. It is a process that inspires sadness. The way they are treating elephants without feeding is very sad. It's a torture. They are torturing the animal. Yet, who else could do this? Especially in Karnataka, this Jainu Kurubas, this is the only tribal community. They are becoming mahut and kawadis. They are the only community maintaining the elephant families or maintaining the elephant, taking care of elephants, everything. The mahouts live beside the kraals and wear the same clothes every day to associate their smell to the elephants. In the end, the mahouts say, the elephants must also choose. So he says it's a two-way process. Both the elephants have to choose him and she has to choose the elephant. Some elephants accept the human beings, some would never accept the human beings. So they will just tie it to a distant place and then just give it uh, food from a distance. For mahouts who are accepted by an elephant, it begins a relationship of man and God. He says weekly once he does the puja, like he takes bath and he give, gives bath to the elephant. He's the caretaker of the, that elephant, no? All the caretakers do this 
they worship them as they worship the god and uh, pray to them like don't harm us they pray to them don't kill us don't harm us we are your caretakers they pray that way they see god in this animal this is one year after captivity and for both it is just a beginning he says i'll stay with it forever Yet, Nanjunda and the other captives will always drag chains. I feel a little sad. To be very honest, I feel a little sad. If I as a person am chained and not allowed to do any work, you may feed me well, you may make me fat, but I don't have a life. They will always be subject to the stick. Really, we'll feel very hurt <laughs> the way they are hitting the elephants. But it's a process of teaming. Sometimes elephants also kill mouths. There are instances, trampling them, killing them. It happens. Doctors say the captive elephants live longer, suffer fewer diseases, and eat a more reliable diet than animals in the wild. Are, your, are the elephants happy here? Yeah, really, really. Very happy, very happy in the sense. You can see it's, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the relation with the mahos, with the coward is here, and how these people will uh, take care of those elephants. Without doubt, the daily bathing of elephants is a joy. The elephants seem to, that seemed to be like their favorite part of the day. But whenever it came to watering or when it came to bathing, the elephants pretty much came running. They were ready to go, let's do this. Yeah, like, the elephants were happy that they were getting a rub down. They were enjoying it. The elephants, the, they close their eyes and they put their snouts on their faces. They just, and they just lay there and they let uh, themselves be bathed and rubbed down. And to see an elephant, which is the biggest mammal I've ever seen in my life, uh, and <laughs> To see him so relaxed in a situation like that was really amazing. Yeah, their skin's really rough and surprisingly hairy. I don't know, there's, they are like gentle giants because they just kind of laid there while we were scrubbing them with rocks because their skin's so tough. It feels like a dang NASCAR tire is what it feels like. After the bath, the elephant gets a little bit of freedom. Every day we'll give bath and we'll, it will be taken back to the forest and there the, play, I mean, good amount of fodders will, it will be there. To retain its uh, natural instinct, we'll keep the elephants, we'll, we'll uh, leave the elephants overnight in the forest itself. That daily release into the forest, those few half wild hours, offers some argument that elephants in this form of captivity, as opposed to zoos or temples, are at least a little closer to nature. But it is also a life of uncertainty. A mahout like Vinod is paid only $120 a month. But these are temporary workers. They work for daily wages. The government provides Vinod, his wife, and his children with a one-room cabin without running water. His family washes clothes in the same pool where the elephants drink. He says his grandfathers have done the same thing, so that is why he's continuing. He doesn't want his son to be like this. That is the great dilemma for mahouts, for elephants, and for society. India now depends upon mahouts to remove the most dangerous elephants from coffee plantations and to care for those elephants for the rest of their lives. These elephants will live for 70 or 80 years and they will need care until they die. He says his community is very important to take care of these elephants. However, Family members say society does not seem to value them. When they go city, they get suppressed. Oh, they're looked down upon yeah. because of their because they don't have money. They dread whenever they have to go get any kind of supplies because 
of the caste system and they're considered like the bottom of it. They are spending a lot of money on capturing an elephant, but at the same time, even one tenth of it, maybe one percent of it, could help elevate the status of the Mahouts. Forest officials would rather not have captives. Once they are out of the cages, uh, we don't have much of the use because here in India, it's banned to uh, rent them or to give them to the uh, you know temples. The logging in India is banned. So we, we are no, no longer cutting the timber. Now, we, since we don't have any logging operations going on, uh, a kind of uh, no job elephants. They don't have any jobs. The one place where the government has put captive elephants to work is Dubare, which has special zoning to allow for a tourist trade. Elephants there give rides do tricks and invite tourists to help with bathing. It drew mixed feelings from students. It's good because it does, it's a way to profit. It makes the elephants self-sustainable. You know, they're providing the money, which in turn can pay the mahouts and can pay for their well-being and their livelihoods, you know. That reminded me a lot more of SeaWorld. <laughs> That's exactly what I thought when we were there, was SeaWorld. Um, it's a way to make money, I guess. It's a way to make an income. And I, I'm not a PETA supporter at all, but it just seemed a little cruel to the animals. They were just going in circles, riding these strangers around. In the other camps, even where it is forbidden, tourists do stop to take pictures, to touch an elephant's trunk, or to watch the bathing. And sometimes they tip the mahouts. But how can anyone expect temporary workers paid on daily wages to remain loyal to their job and to their elephant for as long as an elephant lives? What is the future of it? How long can you push it? Is it fair for us to be sympathetic only to the animal? I am sympathetic to the animal. I am sympathetic to the fact that an elephant is unnecessarily captured without knowing what it is going to do tomorrow. At the same time, I feel sorry for those folks who are also have to take care of it. Swami Vishnumayananda built this park-like environment near Bangalore in a well-known elephant corridor. Yet the Ramakrishna ashram grows profitable banana, coconut, mango, and other crops without fear of elephants. What is your view of this human-elephant conflict? The main reason of the conflict is lack of understanding. The main understanding should be that each individual is a part of the ecosystem. Elephants have roamed here for thousands of years. The forest may now be coffee plantation, but the elephant sees only forest. So we are trying to learn to coexist. Tata Coffee manages 25,000 acres in southern India. Yeah, mine is one of the biggest estates in the company. So during the picking, I'll have minimum of 600 to 800 workers. We have a tie-up with Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So oh, they tie it. Yeah, Tata Starbucks. Oh. This year we have, uh, in fact, it's a joint venture. So they, they, we prepare the coffee for them here. Like when I joined this company about 25 years back, we didn't know what is elephant inside coffee. We would have seen elephants only in the forest. That was the case. Over the years now, elephants have started migrating to the coffee plantations. They come, they stay here because there are a lot of things to eat, mainly jackfruit and a lot of leaf. And we have a lot of storage facility of water. So that's the reason they found this is a better place where there are a lot of water during the summer. There are a lot of things to eat, a lot of shade. And they basically love shade during the daytime. Night they go for their uh, whatever food. By morning, 7, 8 o'clock, they come back. They want a cool place to stay. They don't want to get exposed to sunlight. So over the years, they found these are the places where they can also live. And they started coming here. They started living here. For 365 days, elephants will be inside the coffee plantation. Karthik Krishnan is a biologist hired by Tata to help deal with elephants. He has developed a plan for coexistence. First, every elephant on the plantation is followed. 
I have a setup for uh, elephant monitoring team uh, under me. So they are specially trained for uh, on tracking elephants. So once they are in, inside the coffee estates. This is video shot by Karthik and his team as a group of elephants cross the solar electric fence. They're helping each other. Even the babies get through the wire. All day long, Karthik's trackers will follow these elephants, keeping plantation managers updated on their location. That will then be passed along by phone to workers in the field. So this is one text message system. So I'll be uh, text me messaging to all workers that elephants in particular uh, location, estate, uh, division and location. So I'm mentioning about the particular location. So this message will be sent to all the workers at one shot. So whoever goes to that particular block, they'll be cautioned. So even I, no, nobody wants to, to tell that elephants are there. Even I'm sending this SMS in a local language also, even in English and local language. So people can easily understand. Because elephants are constantly inside the plantation, tossing dirt on their backs, shaking trees to knock down jackfruit, Karthik must make sure all workers are trained in elephant safety. So this is basically on, so how the elephant, elephants will be reacting on the people. So why do they react, how do they react, and why they chase. And while chasing, how we should escape from that particular uh, thing. Yeah, this is working, 100% it's working. So I could able to reach zero accidents. So this is my uh, achievement out of 12,000 workers in Tata Coffee. Still, 90% of the coffee plantations in India, like Naveen's, are small, 10 acres or less they cannot absorb the risk of elephant damage. I think every year we lose something like 25, 40,000 rupees. Plants, air canard plants, coffee plants, coming into the paddy field, and sometimes destroying our uh, cardamom pl uh, plantation. Very difficult to replace them. It takes a long time for it to grow back again. Karthik and Tata are trying to organize a collective effort to spread risks and save elephants. Sure, I've proposed in, I'm doing in uh, all my states, so that uh, I wanted to be expanded to the community level. However, India's government is focused on blocking elephants from leaving the park. During the normal monsoon, we are not in a position to stand here because it will be submerged with water. This is the government's new fence around Nagar Hole National Park. In low-lying areas, it's made of concrete pillars reinforced with steel I-beams, like those used on railroad tracks. At higher elevations, the steel I-beam fences alone will hold the elephants in, while letting smaller animals range outside the park. Also, we will do it in a phased manner. Our aim is to close the whole uh, park with uh, this. The cost of this cage around the park will be about $200,000 per kilometer. Cost implication is huge, but considering the human as well as the elephant perspective, there is no option than uh, to go for this one. Meanwhile, casualties continue to mount. The World Wildlife Federation says the leading cause of elephant deaths in India remains confrontation over agriculture. In spite of that, my students maintain hope for both elephants and coffee farmers. There are three things that I saw that seem like things that are doable right now. And one is to help the mahouts, make sure they have the resources and the financial backing they need to keep doing the job well, to keep the elephants trained, to keep people safe. Then we need messaging services like they have in Tata in every plantation because that'll help make sure that people are staying out of the way of the elephants and that they know where to go and where to be. And then maybe I'm still holding on to the idea that Chinapa had, which is giving some of that land back to the elephants, giving some, some of their habitats back and moving people out, maybe just a little bit, just enough to help expand that area for the elephants and maybe prevent more deaths that way. There's a, so many people that we met that are trying to find an answer. There's so many people wanting to help these elephants and wanting to make things better for the people of India, you know, so people aren't killed, so the crops are saved. All these things that I feel like they're leading in the right direction. So this kind of education 
on a wider spectrum will help build a conversation to think look there's a coffee estate in which the elephants are existing there's a direct conflict for survival i still drink coffee but i think it's time we started a conversation with our baristas and with the entire coffee industry letting them know that every cup would taste just a little better if we knew it was safe for elephants and for the people who grow it. This is the footprint. It's come here, it's lift here, and it's gone. So I have some people even looking at the size of the footprint. They say the age of the elephant. 